Okay, so I want to do one of those camera test things. And then, oh, here we go. Okay, this is on now. And if I push Shut up. The red button. Chin is chip leader in the 1500. Chip leader sort of yeah. Thing. Yeah. Go there yeah. Go. Okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta go. We gotta go. Okay, what do we need? Probably the camera, I think. Bring the fucking camera, Nate. Yeah. We're gonna get so rich from this. Think about like the guys who filmed Chris Moneymaker. Hi, Brian. Hi. Come on. Get his mom on the phone. Okay. Tell her to fly out. Here we go. Yep. Here we go. Game time. Go. So fast. Oh my God. I'm He busted. He busted, he didn't even cash. Fuck! Ooh, I'm Travis, editing stuff, editing stuff, editing stuff. So Jai's pretty deep in the bounty. So we, should, we can go get footage. Yeah. Okay, fuck it. We got this. Well, front door, let's go up the back. Door. What's the fastest way? I always forget. Incoming text message from Jordan Young. I busted. End of message. Berkey's chip leader in the main event. Well, let's hurry up and get all pack all the equipment. Yes, get our passes with the badges. Mm. Oh, he busted. So because this is the last episode, I thought that we could turn the tables a bit and you could ask me a question. Ask the film crew something. Really putting me on the spot here. I have some ideas. Mm, okay. How much do we owe you? What is your PayPal account? Do you think that this vlog was a jinx? You can't prepare for what you can't prepare for. I don't follow. Yeah, it's a jinx. What about it would make it a jinx? We all broke even. How? When? Where were we? You were here filming it all along. I didn't film a final table with you or Christian or Jordan. Nope, but you did with Matt Hunt and old Burke had a 30 ball. None of us made money. Is that true? I thought, you, I thought you did well. I mean, I made $2,300. $2,300 after all that? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what that breaks down to. I think it's like 14K a year. Yeah, I need to re-examine. What were your final net loss Profit loss earnings. I think I lost like in tournaments probably like 25 or a little bit over. 
And in cash game, I won like almost 30. So like, I won a little bit. You won 30 grand in cash? Yeah. What the fuck, Chin? I lay low, man. I'm sure Nicholas Mannion gave you like 5% of his. Yeah, I had uh, Nick wore that shirt at the final table. Wait, you didn't have a piece of him? No, but he paid for dinner on day six, which oh. was nice. We went to Jimmy John's. Jai. So, yeah. Let's no, move past that. No. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it really, honestly, but whatever. What is the hardest part, now that you've gone through it, you know, I asked you questions eight weeks ago yeah. about like, what's the World Series like? And you answer them. Now that you've done it, what do you think the hardest part of the World Series is? Maintaining optimism, for sure. They're just selling hope. It's kind of painful, really. I think over time, you, you develop like that callus and you just become like a little bit immune to the losses and you're like, okay, cool, like I'm so excited. But when those opportunities are consistently like ripped away from you, it becomes a little harder every day. You know, last summer I had a great summer and sometimes you forget about how terrible these summers are. It happens, like the best players in the world are consistently asking themselves like, am I making the right plays? Do I still have an edge in this field? Are they catching up, etc." And like during the summer, given the fact that you're playing so many events, like that's asked a lot. So long as the field doesn't mitigate any sort of volatility and attempt to play a perfect style, then there will always be room to carve a niche exploitative edge. The less volatile the environment becomes, the more strategic it is and the less profitable it'll be for, for anybody of skill. 2018 will probably be just like a defining point where I realized there was a shift going on. Early GTO was mostly figuring out how to protect ranges and keep things at a balance, where now it's evolving into how to protect ranges through initiative and aggression. If I'm able to get ahead of it, then I'm just gonna point to this series as like, okay, that's where I identified the shift. Now, people are using machines to kind of optimize this process, as opposed to just their own observations of what works. So trends are more likely, I think, to stick now, as opposed to just come and go. There's definitely some new trends. Uh, personally, I wouldn't want to reveal it on camera, just like openly. It'll stay within this small group. Well, fuck me, right? <laughs> I'd say the, the highlight of my summer was having the launch party on July 1st. Yeah, so we did our beta launch for the training site, which is fucking terrifying. But yeah, I mean, it's a lot of content. You know, we're putting out eight to 10 training videos a month, plus all the original content that you guys are doing. You know, we had a really good turnout and the launch of the subscription site is coming August 13th. So I mean, really excited about that. And that's where I'm shifting my focus. Yo, know, we do, the best job that we think we can possibly do when it comes to curating information and passing along to our students, but the proof is really in the pudding. And it's, it's nice to like see them win, sometimes win big for the first time. Nick Raniette, he won something for like $95,000, $200 buy-in tournament. Julia, she had a 12 or 13K cash. The Tournament Academy uh, really changed a lot of the way that I approach tournaments. I had cashed before and I had get, gone deep before and now I just, I really just look at the table differently. Yeah, I went down to watch Nick's final table. He was mashing. And it was like a week and a half after the MTT Academy. Seeing like him and Julia and a few others come up with some big scores, it's like, okay, we can give ourselves a little pat on the back and, and kind of celebrate with them. Uh, this has been bothering me. What's with you guys and all the dapping? You mean it's fist like, bumps? Yeah, fist bumps. There's like no handshakes in poker. Do you ever see the awkward, the awkward white guy not sure if he's supposed to go in for the high five or the dap or the handshake? H have I been awake one day on earth? Yeah. Yeah, there's some dirty poker players out there. You don't want to shake hands with them. So it's a hygiene thing. Yeah, there's a lot of poker players. You say hi to a lot of people, you just like, I'm fine. I think that stems from how bad poker players are at high-fiving. Man, what a disaster it was the first, I don't know how many summers. It's like, just look at the elbow. It's all it takes, high-five down the hallway. Hmm. I figured it was a fear of intimacy. No, 
riding with the top off all summer. I'm riding with the top off all summer. With the top off all summer. I'm riding with the top off all summer. With the top off all summer. I'm riding with the top off. First off, take your top off. Too real to be knocked off. $200 slides my socks off. It's movie time, I'm box office. With or without the